Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Signalis. And the reason I'm starting here at the title screen is because I wanted to talk about something that I wouldn't otherwise have had the chance to. That siren you hear playing in the background is actually reaching the level of iconography for me as, like, the Silent Hill Foghorn. And I've been thinking a lot about what it actually means to the story, because we hear it not only here in the beginning, but we also heard it when we discovered, I think, the King in Yellow in that opening, I suppose we could call it a dream. It's something that feels so hostile and threatening, yet so distant, especially when these vocals over the loudspeaker come on. And I've been thinking a lot about what I associate it with, and to me it's like, when you've just woken up, you're still groggy, and you already know that, like, something is wrong, and you're still just waiting to find out what that something is. Another thing I've been thinking about since the last part is how we seemingly are able to pull physical objects from, like, memories or recordings. And Elster doesn't even seem to be entirely aware that she's even doing it. She seems as confused as we are. Last time we got the gold key from that tape, and before that we got the radio implant from... I don't even know what kind of vision that was. And the last part also introduced us seemingly having visions from the perspective of that character we met earlier, so... I don't know, we're, we're just having so many gaps in our perception that we can't account for. And I'm just really hoping that it'll explain at least something. Uh, we get two more thermite flares, that's good, because we used up the last two in the last boss fight. No space to carry maintenance key, so we've already got some doors to unlock. Uh, speaking of that boss fight, what was with that? We jumped down there, had this excruciatingly visceral battle in close quarters, and we find ourselves talking to someone in a hallway who ditches us down the elevator shaft, which, by the way, that Adler is definitely going to get what's coming to him. Well, it's just like a dream where we keep shifting from one topic to the next, with seemingly no bridge connecting them. And judging by the pile of dead units in the bottom of this elevator shaft, he's been doing this for a while. He took our photograph, too. I wonder if things would have gone differently if I hadn't been holding it at the time. But somewhere around here, there is not this one, up here. There we go. Oh my. Are we standing over like a high balcony? Maybe looking down into the mine itself? And go down to the lower level here. Oh. Not only are they piled on the bottom, they're actually overflowing through this lower level. How many units is that? Maybe they were destroyed in order to keep them from succumbing to infection, or... I don't know, maybe there are others who came back. We have to doubt our whole reason for being here, don't we? I mean, we can't trust any aspect of our perception. Maybe this Adler had a good reason to do what he did. I mean, did he deliver the same speech to them as he did to us? The movement on these fans never fails to make me nervous. Uh, more 12 mil ammo. I'm still not sure what we do with it. Bayan will burn. Is that maybe uh, another nation we're at war with? Angry note. I am officially sick of the Yules next door. They've been listening to that stupid song non-stop since the piano room was locked down. If I have to hear it one more time, I am going over there and smashing that stupid tape recorder to pieces. I wonder if there's a way we can borrow a key so we can get into their dorm and put an end to this madness. I don't care about breaking quarantine, if it means never having to hear that song again. Now, I don't think that's what's being implied here, but imagine if this was the reason this whole place fell. Okay, there's some bad boys down there. <laughs> Only question, is this right here, is that your reflection or is that another one? Either way, there's at least two. 
All right, let's uh, shy away from that for now. I think there's a lot of areas still to be explored. What is this? Uh, more 10 mil. Uh, but we are probably all full up on inventory space right now. And this area has been barricaded. I have a feeling the deeper we go into these mines, the worse things are going to be. So the levels are negative, increasing in number the deeper we go. And right now, the lowest we can access is level 6. Uh, I'm going to take this top down then. Let's make sure we've explored every area available to us before we move deeper and downer. Looks like an engine for powering a looping Paternoster lift system. So maybe repairing this is our goal? Oh my. Oh, this is going to be tough. <laughs> and the switches are in German, so maybe we'll have to do something fuse required. I've also gone ahead and googled it because otherwise I just never would have used it. And apparently the eye implant is supposed to be used essentially for taking screenshots of aspects of a puzzle that would otherwise be on the other side of the map. Which makes sense. I'm thinking... Oh god, there's so many of you. Okay, we can grab... Ooh, another star right here. A replica overview star. Fitted with extended legs. Oh, these are the Lady Long Legs. Star units gracefully tower over most Gestalts. Despite their heavy armor, they can move swiftly with their long stride. Their cool and detached demeanor allows them to analyze situations with objectivity and deploy force as required. Trained in close combat and riot control techniques, they operate best in small squads led by an officer star unit equipped with a ballistic shield. Uh, so they're playing robot ready or not. Well, there is a whole bunch of is. And I'm thinking maybe this will be a job for the 10 mil? I mean, we've got so much of it and I'm not burning you all. Alright, so I've returned with some pistol ammo and some stun sticks. And the problem that I'm seeing when weighing this up is that I can kill them cheaply, but I can't kill them quickly. And I'm only now realizing that when they have the numbers, that might be a problem. I've got some room to retreat if they all rush me. But that one appears to be a bit bigger. Actually, you know what? I think you're holding one of those riot shields. You're a star squad. That's why that document was here. Okay, I don't like that one being over in the corner over there because that's going to be one that I can't shoot at until it's right in front of me. Let's do it. Reload quickly. Okay, stomp and stomp and stomp of that one especially. And I'm thinking that maybe we should come back and torch that one. What's our reward? <laughs> I fought a whole squad of zombified stars and all I got was this lousy repair patch. I've got so many of these things, I should start merging some of them with the other healing items, see what they do. And what is this over here? Auto-injector. And yeah, maybe now's the time. But let's start opening this up. Yeah, wow. If I... Uh, so this comes out here, I might have to burn a bunch of them. Because if I'm going to be traversing that room a lot, I can't have a lot of them being alive. Uh, memorandum, lighting malfunctions. Due to a recent incident involving a certain starling that shall remain unnamed, I've adjusted all doors to require visible light to open. Seems like quite an overhaul. This should hopefully stop any more non-service cadre personnel from endangering themselves by stumbling into dark rooms until we can take care of the lighting issues. If you've been assigned an illumination failure repair task, remember to equip a flashlight module so the door sensors will let you in. So we're going to get a flashlight to be used as a key. Ask Adler ahead of time if you need one. He's usually in the quarters on the 8th floor these days. So the 8th floor, that's his lair. Great, there's so many of them now. 
We've probably got the ammo to deal with it, but not if we're going to be going back and forth. That's the problem. And here's the dark room they were talking about. Okay, well, big one is definitely getting torched, like 100%. So let's burn you. The other two can still get up, but I can kill them if need be. Uh, Re-equip these. Maybe we should use those in the next hallway. They seem to be decently abundant. And see how much we can avoid also. Answer, not much. Ow! Okay, you can lunge that far. Cool. Die. Die. And die. And die. Down here doesn't look good. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to flesh out the map right now. Workshop key required. The Paternoster lift system seems to be powered down. I wonder if there's a way to turn it on. Okay, well we already know we're on a fuse hunt. And that door is locked, meaning this is all there is. I'm actually not gonna take a heal right now. Uh, because I would like to merge one of these things with an auto-injector, or whichever one we could, but if I die right now, I'll be fine with that because I'd really rather go back and get my ammo back and do this more efficiently. Uh, replica overview, ARA R. The tough worker bees of the construction and repair industry. One of the earlier replica designs. The simple but efficient ARAs are actually the most produced replica type to date. These strong and heavy worker units are a perfect fit for work in construction and production of industrial goods. In many places throughout our nation, ARAs have already replaced all gestalt workers in fields like climaforming and explosive ordnance disposal. And we have the ability to drop down. Well, that just seems like a poor plan. Seems like a really not good idea and advice I shouldn't be taking from anyone and hi. Oh no. Are you bigger? You look like you got a big thing for a hand. Okay, you're down. And stay down. Since this is locked, I don't imagine I'm gonna wanna come back here. More 10 mil, I'll take it. Oh god, no. No, ow! Okay, just do that. Now I'm gonna have to heal. Do I bleed out over time? I'm not sure. I'll do that, and jump down. Adler. I'm afraid the commander won't receive any visitors at the moment. Wait, um, um, Issa. But perhaps I can be of assistance instead. Who are you? I'm the administrator of this facility. Please, there's no need to be afraid. I'm just here to help. Erica, none of us are here by choice. There's something moving in the corner over there. And now there's not. I'll take that, and now I should actually be my chance to combine things. So if I combine you with you can't combine these so it's probably the uh it's probably the other health item <laughs> such as that right there speak of the devil but it's almost like we're a merged consciousness with that person that would actually kind of help to explain that cursed feeling i got when we met like we were worlds that weren't meant to collide all right but let's do an actual change here uh, combine with Repair Spray, and we get the Repair Spray Plus. And this Adler character is actually really giving me the creeps. There's something so weird about how it, he never changes his, like, calm, helpful administrator demeanor, even as he's behaving in the most threatening manner possible. And we unlock this from the other side. But now we're right in the middle of a floor that we could have just climbed down the ladder to. No space to carry shotgun rounds. We can go through here. 
whole bunch of things. A whole bunch of things everywhere. We've got a lot of combat to do. Alright, how are we dealing with this? I'm thinking you might be another one we burn, but I'm not quite sure yet. How are we doing on ammo? Not a ton. Alright, I'm going to try and sneak up on you and give you the zap. There we go, you're angry, but that's alright. We need to... oh no, oh come on. We need to heal, save, and rearm. Bang. Bang. But once you get up, we're going to be in a lot of trouble, so we need to move in and explore these places. No entry. No entry. Entry. And another of you. The door is locked with a reinforced rolling shutter. I need a fitting shutter gate handle to open it. All right, well, that means we're going to have to fight. Come on. Really not good. We are very low on ammo. I'm really banking on there being something useful around. Come on. This place is so big and there's so many enemies. It's bleeding me dry. Almost literally, I see you in the dark. Is there more than one of you or is that a shadow? Wait, do I have another... I have at least two more stuns. Zap! And stomp! Protector units stored their personal belongings in these lockers. There's nothing of interest for me here. Are you sure? 10 mil ammo? Okay, I desperately needed more. Anything interesting on the table? Uh, security technician guard replica star. S2313 hunter. No! Oh, I love... I just love how you can do that. Through here. What was- what is this? It just flashed 205 on the screen. Hang on, um, I have no faith in me surviving this, but we're gonna use the repair spray. No data feed, though. One seventy-seven? Okay, so it's speeding me more. Happens again each time. 153. Oh man, if I miss one of these things, I am in a pickle. I'm starting to get distortion effects even in the menu. How do I know how to do all this? Is this information just being beamed into my head? 127. Well, we're moving downward consistently. And we're left with just one who we cannot stomp. What was that about? The room was completely different a second ago. It's like we just had an intuition of exactly what to do. Is there a hole in the middle of that painting? Oh no, it's just really, really dark in the middle. But there is something right here. There's a keyhole in the painting. Wait, wait, wait. A painting of a strange island. Somehow it feels very familiar. It actually looks, and I, I only know this because I got it while I was trying to grab a thumbnail of the first episode. It actually looks a bit like an image we saw during the flashes in that first dream. I mean, it looked different, but the shape is the same. All right, well, now we've got to go back outside again. Yep, let's go around you. Back to here. Unlocked, go in. And that's us here. Okay, we... We are in rough shape. We've used a lot of ammo. We haven't made any real permanent progress. We need a flashlight. That's the big thing. Let's see what the 8th level looks like. It is the bottom level. 
and it unlocks from the other side, meaning we're going to have to jump down even further. So the question now is going to be, where would I even look? Because it feels like I've been just about everywhere. Well, no, because there's still a door here that we didn't check. All right, so maybe that's the way to go. You're right there. I can maybe try to sneak around. You'll probably turn around and see me at some stage. But, oh no, that's just... Ugh, that one's just not going to open. No wonder we didn't check. Well, those were shotgun shells. We can grab those. Thank you. And I'm just, I'm just desperately checking the map for anything that can help. But unlike Resident Evil 2, it doesn't tell you when there's something you've left behind. Ah, oh, well, we never did come back to here, two of you. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we do actually have the shotgun ammo to spare now. I'll just take that stuff as it comes. Maybe we'll use one shotgun round. Stump. And a zap. There we go. Uh, we even leave the zappy on the ground. I hadn't noticed that before. Uh, but here is a fuse. Uh, maybe I should have used both shotgun rounds so it would free up an inventory slot. Uh, item high voltage fuse. Your order for this replacement part has been approved and was processed by S23 Management. Please find enclosed the requested part for installation. Falk has specifically requested that the repair of the looping lift system be prioritized over other repairs. Please replace the fuse as soon as possible. It's a huge hassle for everyone to get around without it. Oh, yes it is. And over there is the same thing. There's various half-eaten rations on the table. I'm not hungry. Not even a little bit? I'm really hoping that this fuse allows us to do what we need to. Uh, use fuse, yes. And there we go. But it won't turn on. Oh, okay. So we probably have to get these things to their appropriate uh, to their appropriate settings. We don't want all of that because it'll blow said fuse. It's a math problem. But wait, but then the numbers here, they're not actually corresponding to a thing, or like they sometimes do, so I guess it has to do with the type of component in the slot. I don't know, this is like eight different directions to think in, and I... Yep, there we go, googled it. <laughs> this is one of those things where once I realize what it is I'm expected to do, I think, well, I'm just not putting the time into that. But it seems like we are up and running. You have fun with that. Past you, I predict you'll be getting up very soon. You are already up. Where am I going? Uh, lift should be right here. Yep, there we go. And that brings us to the undocumented part of level six. No. No, we've already been here. And we still don't have the workshop key. Well, this certainly makes things more convenient, though. Oh, does this mean that we can ride it down, perhaps, to level 8? There we go. That's what I was hoping for. That looks more like a dumbwaiter than something that's actually meant to transport people. Although you can't deny the convenience. It looks like a death trap, to be honest. And I see that guy over there. Those visual artifacts that seem to accompany them. Those are actually really helpful, but it's those visual artifacts and knowing that I am a replica that makes me wonder if I can actually trust my perception of them. All right, how are we doing in terms of this? We have one spare shotgun round. We can free up an inventory slot by blowing you the heck away. Here we go. Oh, and there's another one. Okay, stomp. Come on, stomp. Stomp, thank you. And zap it up. And that at least gets us through here for now. Mina. That's the boss that we fought before. 
When it comes to dangerous cargo, heavy machinery, and hazardous environments, no other model rivals the minor units with their high-security power armor bodies. Even lethal radiation, under crushing pressure and in zero-g, they keep their calm demeanor and show exemplary teamwork. Yeah, we got to witness some of their teamwork. Despite their hulking bodies, underneath their face shields a standard Gen 3 cranial construction can be found, making maintenance and social interfacing as easy as with any other replica model. Please note that the minor neural pattern is not suited for combat use. For combat applications, the Sapper variant should be used, which employs a combat-capable persona in the same frame. For more information, see whatever that is. So you're telling me that we fought basically the home model? That there's an even tougher one out there? And shutter gate handle, just what we needed. Falk. Classified information, commander's eyes only. The protector, Blurschenschmaubgen, commander, the head of Ichion facility's protector force, is a powerful prototype bioresonant Falk unit. An authority that may never be questioned, a Falk unit serves not just as a commander to the protectors, but as a nearly godlike being, a perception that is underlined by our tall build and resemblance to our nation's leaders the great revolutionary and her daughter. So clearly there's, there's like so much of an enforced class system here. These replicas have all the intelligence of a person, but it, it's not just like a social divide, it is a social divide that's built in from birth or from creation. It's also aided by her powerful prototype bioresonance module, which not only allows her to bend the will of weaker minds, and fathom their intentions and emotions, but also grants her the ability to manipulate objects from a distance. So, robot telepath is what you're telling me? Hello. Hello, both of you. I'm looking forward to running past you. Is this one not in good shape? On life support in the middle of the whole world falling apart. We can get two repair sprays. They're they're prepping us for a fight. That's what's happening here. We've got some pistol ammo. Inventory full. No shotgun reloads. Just some health and some stun prods. That's it. And again, not super useful. Falk's diary. I don't know how much longer I can go on. I don't want to live anymore is what I've become. The red eye beyond the gate showed me. No. Touched me. Poisoned me. It feels like my mind has been contaminated. Defiled by another person's memory. I'm no longer fully myself anymore. But I've not fully become someone else either. Oddly enough, I can relate to that highly specific problem. I'm stuck here between her and me with half-formed dreams and recollections penetrating my brain and tainting my every action. Who is she? Who is that white-haired girl? Why do I long to see her again? Why would she curse me like this? We're all seeing the same person. Is this a face I'm looking down at? Oh no, is that something clasped in your hands? I was gonna say, you look like an owl in a sweater. A heavy box fashioned to look like an owl. Oh hey, I was right! Uh, there are small holes at the top looking like a speaker. Or a microphone. Um, they're actually the same device. <laughs> Snort adjust glasses. Actually, you being a robot and all, you clasping that in your hands while lying here. Kind of makes it seem like a jar containing your organs or something. Like the burial of some pharaoh. Now, we've still got an entire floor to explore, though. Uh, we have already been below. That's locked. Library key required. We're looking for all manner of keys today. And yet another room that we can't enter without a flashlight. Whole bunch of guys, whole bunch of guys who 
You know, I can't believe I haven't commented on this yet, do actually quite closely resemble the nurses from Silent Hill 2. But we can't go there either. I'm assuming then that we're going to find what we're looking for behind that shutter gate. That looks like a solar system model. Yeah, these are some of the places we've heard about on the posters. Katej, that was uh, that was in need of liberation. And I guess there's our star in the center. An orrery showing a rotating view of the current relative positions of the inhabited worlds of the solar system. So this is only the inhabited ones. There are potentially others. Well, that gives us actually quite a lot of context with very few words. The sci-fi world building is also on point, which I actually wasn't sure if it was being super vague on purpose. Like maybe we were only supposed to understand our motivations, but not really the world. But in quite short order in this part, we've actually learned a lot. If we <laughs> move quickly, we can do that. Now would be a real bad time for you to get up. There we go, shutter handle. And through here. Finding ourselves another save room. Oh, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's been so long. And we get the owl key. And is there something else there? No, that's just a really cool looking desk lamp. Oh, where can I get one? Oh, and here's the Yule overview. Uh, simple universal light replica owl. Euler units are the backbone of the Yusin Nation's workforce. These elegant, multi-purpose worker units are suited for all kinds of domestic tasks like cleaning, cooking, and simple medical and office work. Yules are highly social and get along well with each other, as well as most other replica models. While unfit for combat, their lightweight frame makes them a prime choice for distant facilities where supplies are limited. Okay, so they're the cutie brigade, to be protected at all costs. Listen, this game's also got a thing going for classical music. It may actually be diegetic because there's a speaker coming out of the wall on the top left. Oh hey, I've just realized our map actually allows us to go all the way up. So when we scroll through on the bottom left there, we're actually like directly tracking our progress through the map screen. That's kind of interesting. So we are here presently, and if we go back up to level 6, we should be near to where the owl key is used. No, that's the workshop key. Alright, uh, no, probably up there then. Right here, we had to go all the way back for this one. Oh look, they've decorated their dorm with Christmas lights. Kind of hard not to humanize these replicas, although they were pretty human already, when you see that they appreciate mood lighting. Pick up broken music cassette? Well, music is a gateway to another world. Question is, where can we use it? Oh, <laughs> right here, that answers that question. A portable tape audio player with a knife embedded in the speaker. So this is destroyed, but maybe we can use it with the speaker device downstairs? Look, we can see ourselves in the mirror here. And another stun rod. We can never get enough of these things. I've just come down to the 8th floor service landing, and I'm actually seeing that we are currently directly above Falk's office. So that means there's a whole area through here that we've yet to explore, probably through that infested east hallway. Uh, let's inspect it. I need to repair the magnetic tape inside before it can be played again. Oh no. Well, that's a problem because the only other place I can think to go is going to be through that infested east hallway. So I guess we should be ready for a fight then. Zap. Stomp. Shoot. 
Oh, come on, you're really not dead after a shotgun blast to the face? We don't have a lot of this stuff left. Well, that's a problem, and you need a key. Hopefully there's something we can do here. Please be a flashlight. That would open things up the most. Uh, north hallway, come on. There's just things everywhere. We can't afford any of this. To the point where I'm about to start sacrificing health. Well, here's another service lift and more darkness. But I need the admin key to call it. Everything's locked. Everything's locked or infested. There's stuff in the way. There's stuff coming back to life, so none of my ammo means anything when I use it. I can reopen this hallway from the other side. That's like the one thing I can do. Oh, and I love it. I love how that can happen. Come on, go through, go through, go through. I've read that, like, they'll stay on a door for a while after you go through, and they'll de-aggro after some time, but I have not found that to be the case, because I've had them be right on the door, like, five to ten minutes after I've done this. Alright, the good news, we do actually have more shotgun ammo left than I thought. Thank you, Boss Bite, for providing me with tons. And I think we might have to start flaring some of these guys, because some of these hallways are going to be impossible to traverse. Oh, we can actually interact with this. Uh, postbox key required. Alright, well, that's just yet another thing for us to look out for. Alright, so we gotta make our way through this hallway. Use some of our shotgun ammo. Boom. Oh, wow. Wow, that was so fortunate. I did not know that that could happen. Alright, well, we've done that. But we don't have more shells to load up with. Uh, hummingbird key required. Yep, just just add it to the list. Just add it to the list of keys we're missing. Oh my god, it just never ends. Nothing. I think we're gonna have to scooch past you. Yep, zap. Stomp. Shoot! Come on, shoot! I said shoot! Oh, you're not dead?! Okay, well, whatever ammo gains we had, they are now made up for two shells. Alright, my god. Please tell me that's the flashlight. There's a flashlight module lying on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's too dark to see. Uh, wait, how do I install this thing? Shoulder-mounted flashlight module powered by the internal replica power supply. So let's equip. Oh, we have you instead of the charges. C. Well, at least we got some more shotgun ammo. Desperately needed shotgun ammo. Oh, and uh, if the gun is not fully loaded, it automatically goes in. That's useful. And there's another door that needs unlocking. What are we looking for, like seven or eight different keys right now? And here's Adler's file. An integral part of every protector is the administrator unit. A single Adler can manage and oversee all administrative tasks for an entire facility, freeing other operational commander units to focus on the direct control of protector units. The Adler is designed to work as a direct counterpart to the Falk unit, serving as her adjutant by taking care of necessary paperwork and calculations. So could there be some kind of effect here then where there's no balance of power, where there's no control between the tasks and this one just uh, assumes both? Uh, Wonderwaffen, super weapons of our nation in the battle against the Empire. Falk units. Yep, that admin capability is definitely worth having. And now it really is a Silent Hill 2 callback. We have got ourselves a shoulder-mounted flashlight. Meaning a whole lot of things just opened up to us. Okay, so there's a service elevator. And we can unlock this from the other side now. Alright. Things are slowly going more in our favor. Now, as far as I know, this is the first place we saw that had this issue. Don't get up now. 
So if we go through here, we should be able to see! And there's guys! There's guys, there's guys. I need to rearm. Take two using the pistol. Okay. I'm starting to think you're also aggroed, by the way, by the flashlight. Because you didn't attack us before. Thank you for the auto-injector. Now there's gotta be something in here we can use. Well, there's a door. That helps. Oh, a shooting range. I wonder if we can test our skills, get something out of it. Uh, well, we've got shotgun ammo. Come on. And more of that, uh, more of that 12 mil. And tape! Oh, there is so much we need here and no place to put it. And a weapons case. Literally, uh, like, uh, I'm so far into this playthrough in terms of hours, and fully most of it is running back and forth trying to sort out the inventory. Oh my god, there can't be another one. Well, you're one of the hiding under the floor boys, so I'm not too worried about that. What I'm really worried about is these guys. So let's grab you, and you, and we're still not going to have enough space, and you. So, so much back and forth. But I'm assuming now that I have that tape, I can use it to fix the cassette, right? There we go, and it is currently working. You guys are getting up, which means we need to end this now. We cannot, like, this has to be the last time we come through here, because I'm not using any more ammo on you. Uh, into here. And take this thing with the padlock on it. A uh, small storage box for pistol-sized firearms, locked with a small padlock. Uh, if we inspect, yeah, you pretty much tell us the same thing. We're going down to floor 7. Where we need to get into the protector office, which is right next to us. That'll be a good start. Yep, that's, that's exactly what I thought would happen. And we just do not have the armament for this. Confirming the flashlight theory, though. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna sneak by you, go through. You're, I imagine, going to be getting up shortly. We'll bank our stuff here, and we're gonna go shotgun. We're gonna go high damage, low time. I actually kind of like it when you're in that corner there, because it means I can just slip on by. And we need to be ready to just instantly annihilate these things. I wish I could have one stun stick, like, in reserve, but I need that for the flashlight. Or I could just run through here. There we go. You can't stop the door animation. I see a buddy over there. And we can get the island key. Yes, that must go into the picture frame. Colibri in the management office. One of the Colibris has holed herself up in the management office on the seventh floor. I've seen her and her illusions sitting inside the room, crying. Which one is the real one? That's what we encountered before. The one we defeated with the radio frequencies. I think it's because of that painting in there. Whenever I was close to her, I felt like my mind was being assaulted by the image of that island. Just like we were before. The sensation was strong enough to make me hurl. Is there a way to neutralize the transmission? Maybe some sort of feedback loop of the frequency of her control signal? This game really knows how to ride the line between magic and technology. Alright, that's a whole lot of 10 mil ammo. Come on, camera. You, you went down, right? I couldn't really tell in the dark. Alright, it looks like you're good. And the hunter's key. Well, there's two more. What I've noticed about this game, and I actually kind of like it about the level design, is that it really makes you dread movement. It makes you dread exploration. But it all seems like such a complex and overwhelming puzzle, and you kind of reach a moment where everything clicks and all the solutions start cascading at once, rather than it being a steady flow of solutions. 
It's kind of like kerplunk in that way. Yep, okay, you guys are here. Let me out. We've got the... What, what, what keys do we even get? The hunter's key and the island key, and we've got the cassette. We're looking good. Down here. If we inspect it... Owl songs. The cassette seems to be part of a set of songs popular with Yule units. So our intel on the Yule units thus far is that they're silly little ladies who like to sit in their Christmas light lit dorms and listen to owl songs. That tracks. I aspire to have that stage of my life, but for now, how do we get to the stage of my life where I'm listening to owl songs? Oh, okay, yep. I gotta remember to start turning this thing off. I can't just have it everywhere. And you're standing guard outside the room that... We can't see much, but I get the impression it's the most important room in the place. Alright, we should be able to use our island key here. God, that's satisfying, like completing a puzzle in a Nancy Drew game. And we get the workshop key. Workshop key can be used right here. In we go. And thankfully, no enemies. Uh, Star and Storch. Uh, Replica Known Issues Part 2. Classified Information, Commander Eyes Only. Previous experience with these replica models has given us insight into irregularities in their behavior that stem from the original neural patterns used for these units. Due to the sensitive nature of this information, this document should be destroyed after reading. So they never got the chance to destroy it. Also, original neural patterns used for these units, so are they actually copied from humans? Star. Despite their normally laid-back demeanor, stars have a strong internal hierarchy, which is important to take into consideration when promoting units to officers. Not promoting a respected unit, or promoting a unit low in status, can lead to friction within dorms. Stars will occasionally develop in-group rules involving physical punishments. It is recommended to allow some officers to own military weapons as fetish objects to stabilize their persona. And Storch. Storch units initially have a short temper. Training them in patience early after deployment is key, as their neural pattern is less stable than other models. Failing to do so may yield an extremely volatile personality, prone to cruelty and violence. A common strategy is pairing them closely with an older star unit, Storch's persona stabilizes by showering or bathing. Books on history or mythology work well as fetish objects. That's really interesting. So, like, they're using these different replica models as uh, essentially stand-ins for human personality types. But in doing so, it's really only providing more consistent and reliable ways to train them or exploit those personality types. The allegory game is strong with this one, and we got a whole lot of 12 mil ammo. I'm assuming the 12 mil is probably going to be in that box, right? The one with the padlock? I mean, we got it from a shooting range. Oh my god, golly gee. Uh, am I learning to fly an F-16? Oh. Oh my god, just use music cassette. Okay. God, this scared me. Oh, I see. It's a broadcasting unit, so we've got to tune into 142. Alright, that's kind of neat, actually. Uh, so we go over to here. 142. At least I brought some music back to this place. Although I'm not entirely sure what it's done for me. I do quite like it though. Oh no, I, I do actually recognize this. This is owl music? Oh, avoid! No, you know what? I bet if we play this next to, uh, if we play this next to Falk... 
we can make it work, right? Okay, um, we need to get downstairs. I'm going to turn this off for now, lest we get any unwanted attention. Uh, nope, I wanted to go downstairs. That's on me. Right here. If we just go through here. You guys, please refrain from getting up. You guys are going to get up, but that's okay, because you'll wait until I'm on the other side of the room. Most annoying thing is that your music follows me into the next space, and... We can wake up our sleeping beauty. For the song. That's interesting, to say the least. If that is indeed what I'm supposed to do. Yes! Yes, dude, this is so cool. It's like we're... Look, all of this is just, like, entertainment devices and work robots, and yet it all feels like we're in a fairy tale or something in the way it plays out. The hummingbird key. How fitting. Just please don't get up. Alright, uh, let's shut that down. I almost feel like I should find some way to leave that unit here and let you listen to it forever, but I don't think that's going to be viable. I mean, it is part of my head right now. Can use the hummingbird key to get in here. And into the big boss's office. Eagle key, yes, yes, yes. Uh, call Bryce note. Keep an eye on Adler. He's hiding something from us. There was nothing in his diary, but when I probed his mind, there were memories of an Elster unit working at Serpinski. There's no record of that model of replica ever being deployed here. An order for a single unit for some survey work in the mine was briefly considered, but no new orders were made due to the commander's sickness. Yet Adler spoke as if he remembered us, said we shouldn't have returned. And Alina's note seemed to imply that we had been here before as well. No space. KLBR, that's Colibri. Uh, a marvel of modern technology, the Colibri is the most capable bioresonance unit ever produced. Every Protector Falk unit is aided by a cadre of Calibri unit adjutants, which can amplify her bioresonant signals, as well as produce their own. Despite their diminutive build, Colibri's are one of the most effective protector units. Able to directly influence the minds of replicas and gestalts, extract information non-verbally, and communicate among themselves instantly in the full bandwidth of the senses, the Colibri's bioresonance is the closest recreation of a true hive mind. You might understand, I mean, I think they said as much before, but that's basically what we killed. A uh, uh, infected version of that in the room with the island key? Wait, oh wait, I didn't get to see it. Well, there's one in here. And our radio is instantly turned on, playing that music again. Alright, let's see what it does. 80. Uh... And something else in the middle of that, but I don't even have time to unpack it. So this is how we deal with a zombified psychic robot. We're really stacking the modifiers here, aren't we? S-T-I-R-B? Wait, I, I couldn't read that. Okay, I need to get out of here. I just need to get out of here. I haven't saved in so long. 220. Okay, 220. So it's a bit randomized. I don't know if I'm losing health while I'm just standing here. But if I if I miss it, which is extremely likely if there's other artifacts. No, it was it, it was 220, wasn't it? There we go. And I guess I can always hunt for it. But you seem to be down now. Shotgun rounds. Well, I got bows. And no space. I was only able to take the one that loaded directly into the gun. That's actually pretty neat. That's pretty cool how we can load a partial 
thing from the ground into our into our weapon. But what else are we looking for here? And the post box key. Once again, so many things to carry and so little room. And, you know, I should be getting back to a save room because I haven't saved in forever. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, perhaps the hunter's key combines with the gun case? That would make sense. A uh, short barrel, double action, six shot revolver that fires 12 millimeter high power ammo. High recoil, strong knockback. But maybe pretty good on its own. Yeah, knocks back enemies and shields with ease, so you're good against the shield stars. But we can put you away. While we're up here, we do have the eagle key as well. Quite notably, upon returning here, same with upstairs. Your corpse is just gone. And there's the postbox key. We're heading back to level 6 or 7, I forget which. Another way, while we're here, I expect you guys soon. Yep, there you are. But thankfully, it's only one of you. We have the... Oh, come on. I always go through the wrong door. Dodge around, go through, and through. If all goes well, we shouldn't have to deal with you for all that much longer. We have the Eagle Key. And we gain access to yet another office. And why did everybody have to lock their doors and then die? It's like cars in Project Zomboid, but here is the Elster document. Which, you know, if we weren't supposed to be here, why do you have this? A versatile combat engineer unit primarily designed for orbital service. These tough and stoic loners are best suited as specialist sappers and scouts. Their technical knowledge and combat capabilities make these units true survivalists, especially when in their iconic white and blue heavy combat configuration, which sports bullet-resistant armor plating on their chest and forearms. Since the original neural pattern for this unit was lost with the destruction of the Central Neural Archive on Vignetta, New Elster units have been produced based on decommissioned units from the Penrose program. We heard about that earlier. Also, I really gotta wonder if these replicas feel any sort of connection to the neural pattern that started them. I mean, is, is it like a past life for them? Actually, I suppose that could be one interpretation for some of what we're seeing. But Issa is still very much alive. Adler's Diary. I've been fascinated by a peculiar piece of furniture I discovered in storage. A strange box with a removable dial in the front that was confiscated from a worker some time ago. I was instantly drawn to it, though I'm not sure why. When I put my ear on the mechanism, I can hear it faintly clicking, like a clock. Without Colbry's help, it has become much harder to coordinate the logistics, Cadre. If there's anything good to say about that woman, it's how she knows how to make others respect her orders, despite her minuscule stature. I went to see her today, but her room is still locked. I had a dream tonight. Another memory of the gestalt life, I believe. Ah, so they do. I was wearing my uniform. There was a young woman, her hair white as snow, you've seen her too. And I was conducting some sort of test. I had a deck of cards with astronomical symbols on them, and asked her to guess the planet on the card I was holding. I was playing with that mechanical lockbox again, of which I am now sure is some kind of astronomical calendar, when I suddenly remembered a conversation I had with another replica when I was inspecting the mining site. However, it was clearly a model I've never seen before. Some type of engineer with an orange chess piece. In my memory, she was just another member of our staff, but no such replica was ever stationed on Serpinski. Replica memory is not the most reliable, they say, but never before have I experienced such a strange phenomenon. So both the white-haired woman and myself are familiar to him, but in a way that he doesn't quite understand. The the little enigma of that box could only distract me from the chaos around me for so long. All the box contained was a small notebook, 
of which all pages turned out to be blank. It's been miserable since our beloved commander has fallen ill. I long for her stern guidance, that overwhelming authority in which she bathes a room. More sick, making my work even harder. How are we meant to shoulder this workload with no reinforcements? My only consolation is that as our protector staff decreases, so does the workforce we oversee. While more and more replica end up in the hospital wing, Gestalt workers seem to succumb much too fast for any attempts at treatment. Another diary filled, for no benefit but my own satisfaction. I have not ordered a new one yet since I spent my saved ration marks on that marvelous looking fountain pen, but I guess I'll make use of that notebook. The very notebook we're holding. This isn't just a fever dream for us, it's been a fever dream for everyone. But it's all these rigid personalities, essentially left to their own devices, and instead of maintaining those rigid personalities, they're forced to adapt to the circumstances around them. Well, I guess some adapt and some break. Although, where you draw the line depends on how you interpret either of those things. Oh, great, a safe. There's a hole in the front of the box. It looks like something is missing from the mechanism. Something which can perhaps be found in the thing above? It also seems like uh, this guy had an interest in, like, I guess what you could loosely call ESP. And look at these cards on the table here. Alright, so you're there. Go around. Okay, so you're slow. We can get out here and go up a few levels. The, the way this level is laid out is just all about gameplay. These hallways are choke points, and you gotta keep in mind the status of each one at any given time. But if we go back up to, was it six or five? Six, right here. There is our library key. We're almost done with this area. <laughs> the elevator is out of order. That's the only thing you have to say out of this. Library key, and then we go. A wounded unit. All right, hang on while I while I read these between Mina and Adler. Replica Known Issues Part 3 Previous experience with these replica models has given us insight into irregularities in their behavior that stem from the original neural patterns used from these units. Due to the sensitive nature, blah blah blah... Mina's neural pattern is extremely stable. Little has to be done to keep Mina's happy. They get along well with most other models thanks to their sometimes submissive, sometimes motherly personality. Unlike other models, diary keeping is not mandatory for persona stabilization. Small stuffed animals may be given as fetish objects, though those resembling cats should be avoided, as they might cause resurfacing gestalt memories, yes. It's like I speculate on something and ten seconds later it becomes clear. Adler units work best when left alone. They do not mix well with their own type. They will usually become very emotionally dependent on their commander. Adlers are very susceptible to bioresonant suggestion, making them fairly easy to control. However, they become bored very easily, and may need new fetish objects at regular intervals for stabilization. Okay, there's other stuff to do, but I want to talk to you first. Anything else in the corner? Oh, it's Colibri. Who are you? You're not one of our staff. The others, they've changed. We no longer sing in unison. I used to be able to see into their minds. We were as one. Together we guided them all. But now I can't understand their thoughts anymore. So you're still linked into the infected, maybe. I've never been so alone before. They're still together, and I'm here outside, and they won't let me in. 
I can't stand their song anymore. This is the only place where I don't have to hear them. This is the only place I'm safe. They all derive satisfaction from doing their jobs, and all of them are in a situation where they can't, like, fulfill their base needs anymore. In your case, you're thrown into just the opposite scenario. I can't go on like this. I wish I had become like the others, too. At least then, I wouldn't be alone. I hate this. Well, we got some repair spray. Uh, there's more notes here. Replica Known Issues Part 4. Great care should be given to Colibris. Their neural patterns are very unstable, and their bioresonance module makes them very susceptible to influence from others. Like most bioresonant individuals, Colibris will often subconsciously create an emotional feedback loop, imitating and then broadcasting the emotions of those around them, acting as a sort of amplifier. While they're trained to recognize and disengage this behavior, Already unstable units can sometimes spiral into persona degradation. Due to their bioresonant connection, neural pattern development in Colibris varies less than in other models. The constant exchange of memories and emotions between units of a cadre acts as a sort of safety net that buffers extreme changes. However, once a majority of units in a cadre degrade, they will drag remaining units down with them. Because of this, it's important to decommission Colibri units instantly when they begin to degrade. For Persona stabilization, Colibri should have access to a well-stocked library. It seems like building these things is, like, inherently cruel. Mm hmm. Okay, so what do we do here? All right, obstacle detected, alignment error, use manual controls. But that doesn't work, we can only move, oh. I was gonna say we can only move right, but from a given spot, we can only move certain ways. But how do I know, how do I know what I want? Oh, I get it, but when there's an actual like thing in the way, that's what blocks us. So if we go to here, we can't move down. So what we really want is to push ourselves into here, and then go up, and there we... It's the king in yellow. And we've got the astrolabe. Okay, well, we're examining that. Uh, where is it? strange clockwork-like dial mechanisms with astronomical symbols on the front. The back of the device looks like it might slot into a bigger mechanism. Yep, we've already found that. Now we've just got to get ourselves back to it. So that'll be fun. You know, I haven't actually tried going down when we're on the lowest floor. Oh, it just brings us back up over here. That makes sense. I guess it probably rotates underneath. Uh, so where do we have to bring this? Right, right here. Let's use you. Oh, it's another puzzle. One of these rotatey puzzles. But, oh my god, oh my god, that thing in the other room, that's gonna show us how we do this, right? Oh no, well, I tell you what, that'll actually be... A good place to use the synthetic eye for the first time. Now I care a little bit more about this. I'm going to shoot you in the face. Not because I need to, but because I can. But I'm gonna wait as long as I can. Equip that eye, look at this, and I guess take a picture. Oh, yeah, there we go. And we can hold up to six of these. So I'll go like that.
So if we equip the photo module and use it, we can view this photograph and potentially that helps. And we've got the star around Heimat, but does anything else even like have a symbol I can use? Well, what we really should have done is use the star as a central point, but I think I can get the gist from this. The next thing down should be at a pretty far away angle. And then these relatively close, right? Actually, wait, this one might be here and this one here. There we go. All right. And we get the administrator's key. He is going to be so mad that I had this. And I am very happy about that fact. And shrine diary. Oh, and it's a tome. I've started yet another new diary. How time flies. The work is dull and monotonous as ever in Serpinski, but a bright light illuminates my day. Today I was invited to a meeting by Commander Falk, and she was as magnificent as ever. Another day passes. During my meeting with the Commander today, I felt the strangest sensation of familiarity as I sat with her. Sadly, our meeting was interrupted by an unexpected power outage. I've been feeling strangely paranoid these days. Never before have I felt so strongly the sensation of deja vu as I have these past few days. When I checked the pages of my diary today, I noticed that for some inexplicable reason, I seemed to have dated my previous entries with today's date. What an embarrassing mistake. Every day feels a bit like I've lived it before, and even stronger is the sensation that something is somehow just slightly out of place. Why is my diary filled with entries I cannot recall writing? Why are they all dated to today? Has the loss of my beloved commander finally gotten to my mind? Am I going insane? I fear what will happen if anyone finds out. I am alone in this. If they discover my notes, I'll be decommissioned too. Something is wrong. I can feel it. Is this really madness? When I read the pages of my diary, I recall events that never happened. A yesterday that never was. Yet it feels as real as the one I actually experienced. This cannot merely be a defect of my mind. It feels as though in this room, I peer into another version of reality. How? I do not know. Perhaps I too have become sick like the others without realizing but I will not succumb. A slow accumulation of reproduction errors, a gradual corruption of information, a story misremembered, slowly morphing with each retelling, like genetic material, mutating and evolving, like the replica mind, copied over and over from an aging template. So, this game is setting up a lot of potential explanations for what could be going on here. It could even be multiple things, all converging to create this fever dream. But it seems to be almost like a universal experience. Maybe our mind is degrading as well, in a way that seems to be inevitable. I don't know. But I will find out. The answers lie below. I can feel it. Someone or something calls me from there, in the mine. And now it calls us as well, because that's where we're going next. Well, I'll tell you what, mineshaft access is right next door. And this time, this is the door I want. So let's dodge you, go through here. And use that admin key to get out of this area once and for all. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, we finally reached our goal, but... I don't know if it's what we really want. I suppose our single-minded goal of finding Alina is what drives us forward. It's the mineshaft access elevator controls. If she's still alive, she's probably there. 
we have to try, right? And it, can I just say, I always love a game, a horror game, where the protagonist isn't driven by just escaping. That can be perfectly serviceable, but when the character can turn back and is choosing not to, that's something else altogether. And for as much of a dive as we've been taking down these levels, we're going so much deeper now. I know you're here. Oh no. I've done this countless times before. You don't belong here. Get him, girl. Get him good. But why are we seeing it? Oh no. Is she gonna be a boss fight? I'll make a note of the fact that I have not saved in some time, but here we are, down in the mines, we've reached our goal. So it seems there's, like, multiple people that we're, like, psychically linked to. This Issa, Issa, the white-haired woman. Oddly enough, the person we're looking for, not so much. We haven't heard a thing from her. We can go through there. I, I, mean, I just, I don't know where to go. Alright, this side is caved in, so... There's only the one way forward. But going off of past experience, it seems likely that we might be heading into a boss fight real soon. And there might be a knife-wielding problem pretty close by. Although she is a Gestalt, so there may not be a need for that. What is all this? These look like maybe mining equipment or maybe the guns that Mina was carrying. High power mining lasers. They're too large and heavy for me to use, so that's what she was using. Okay, uh, if we look down into the dark here... We can see a little further, but it doesn't get us anywhere new. I was gonna do my outro, but I can't do that until I save... I mean, she seemed scared. He was hunting her. But would she maybe have the same reaction to encountering me here? You know, I just realized it feels really immersive in a horror protagonist role to be pointing the shotgun forward and limping as I walk because I've been damaged. And that's always what the final girl looks like at the end of every movie, so I guess it makes it feel fitting. So many different avenues. You're not gonna be a problem, are you? Ah, uh, hello. You're not a protector, are you? What brings you here? I'm Bio. If you're down here, you're probably looking for something. I'd help you, but one of my hydraulics failed and I can't move. I'm pretty much done for, so you can just leave me here. There's no point repairing an old unit like me, so don't worry about it, okay? It'd be a waste of resources. You are worth all the resources in the world right now. I'd offer you my mining laser, but I don't think your frame could supply the power output. You're probably better off using a gun. There should be some useful equipment in the mining office. It's just south of here. Don't worry about me. There are many replacements. I feel so bad for you. Which is quite a whiplash given our first impression of one of you. We're just replicas after all. Right? In the end, what's one drop to an ocean? When I die, they'll just make another. That trail off indicates you feel the weight of your own statement. 
Thank you for talking to me. I hope you find what you're looking for. Is there really nothing we can do? Alright, well you said south of here. I'm just going to assume that's the bottom of the screen. But I need to save quickly. No map data at all. And we can't open that door. So it must be through here. Uh, here we are. Oh man, what a ride this episode has been. So many keys and locked doors, but also so much information about the replicas and the world we're in. More importantly though, we've learned that we're not alone in this weirdness, that there seems to be almost a collective insanity that may or may not, but probably is not, caused by whatever the sickness is. I think it's so cool how it's using the unique rules of its sci-fi setting to actually further enhance the dreamlike weirdness that permeates the whole game. We've seen this unreliable perception take different forms in different replicas, but the woman with the white hair seems to be a universal occurrence. I can't wait to find out what that actually means. This game has got me so curious. And we've got a flare gun, but sadly that is going to have to wait until next time. Until then, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.